Brought to you for the 24th consecutive year by the Pilot Life Insurance Company, a Jefferson Pilot Company. Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament. The Terrapins of Maryland versus the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Welcome to Capitol Center and our big game, the championship of the Atlantic Coast Conference. I'm Jim Thacker. Joining us here for our opening of our telecast is Robert James, Commissioner of the ACC. And Bob, you just had another grand show this week. Jim, each year we come along and talk about how great the previous season was. And goodness, this season has to rank with the best of them. Certainly those two games last night were exciting. I just don't know how the fans could ask for greater games than they had last night. And I think it was... The stamina, the, the ability to these young men is just overwhelming. You've had outstanding crowds, about over 19,000 every game, and never have problems selling tickets, do you? No, I'm afraid the problem's the other way, Jim. I hope we sometime get in the facility that we can accommodate all the people, because anybody who comes to it just has to have a great desire to come back and see it the next year, and it's a great problem to have. Bob, you've had a remarkable year. Your teams have from a standpoint of national rankings. You've had four, sometimes five teams in the poll. Jim, I, I'm so pleased with that. Uh, when you get the in-season play that we have where your teams are playing against the top uh, four or five and the top 20 each week, you're just not going to win a lot of games. And we have some great teams with records that might not be what would be represented if they're playing elsewhere in the country. And I don't say that derogatorily in any way. But I do think it's indicative, again, that we really do deserve to have five teams in the NCAA. And I certainly hope that the NCAA committee will see that same way I do. Well, I think everybody realizes two of them are playing here for the championship tonight, North Carolina, Maryland. There shouldn't be much question about those two. And you're referring, I know, to Virginia Wake Forest at least and perhaps Clemson. That's right. And, of course, Clemson with 20 wins has to be very much in the consideration now. Uh, that's not a very popular topic around the United States, and I'm certain that uh, I'm going to have a little bit of prejudice anyway, but I just have to feel that if you sit down and analyze the entire picture, that they merit it. Well, I think Clemson was in a similar spot last year, and they made the final eight. They really did, and I kind of hope that we're going to bring them the same kind of luck this time, Tim. Well, Bob, I know you're going to be a busy man, an excited man for the next uh, few weeks as we get into the final playoffs, and you want to get stationed now for this great game. We enjoyed having you with us. Thank you so much. Jim, and thanks to you and Billy and Bones and Bobby and all the people in the truck for another super year. I've been watching the games on the monitor upstairs, and it's just been outstanding. Thank you, Commissioner Bob James. And now to introduce the National Anthem, here's announcer Barb Brooks. Now, ladies and gentlemen, would you all please rise and join us in singing our National Anthem which will be played for us this evening by the University of North Carolina Pep Band. coverage of the championship game of the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament after these messages. Thousands are here for this big game. Welcome aboard to Billy Packer and to Coach Bones McKinney. And I think we got to say right off the top, Billy, everybody buzzing here by a score we just heard. Well, Arizona State uh, beat Oregon State today by 20, so the top teams in the nation have really been dropping by the wayside. All right, we have two top, two of the top teams in the country primed here to play for the ACC, North Carolina and Maryland. And they're coming off uh, very big victories last night in the semifinals, uh, especially uh, North Carolina. They just got by. 
Well, they did get by. That was a very hotly contested basketball game from start to finish. Came down the last four seconds in the part of Wake Forest having a chance to pull it out. Both teams expended a great deal of energy, but at, at this point, I think more, all these players will be going on fumes. Well, Bob Bones, we're going to see right here some of the Maryland team acts. I've never seen a better performance by a team of them. No, that was Reggie Jackson that just shot that ball. You know, Jim, we were thinking last night, was there one player on the Maryland team that did not play great? There, were, there was not a one that didn't. This is Albert King shooting a foul shot here. It was just simply a blast. 62% they shot from the floor, which was really outstanding. Here's Wilson with the ball for Virginia. Makes a pass off to Lamp. What's this shot? He had to double pump to get it up there, but did a great job. And you see what Buck Williams did? The length of the floor to King and then to Manning, and Manning is the man that's putting it in the basket. But he fouled on that particular play. Well, he scored six early baskets, and Billy, Buck Williams seemed to, to kind of hold Ralph Sampson down for two. Well, Ralph Sampson, I thought, played a great game emotionally. Virginia got out of it so early that they never could get back as a team concept. But Buck was sensational off the boards. And when Lefty has both Buck and Pittman in their control in the play, they are really tough. There was Sampson telling uh, Williams that he'll see that shot sometime later. But Maryland played so well last night, as Bones pointed out, every guy in the team had a game above his normal. Here's another example of uh, hitting the boards by Maryland. All right. You're going to watch. Buck goes up. That was Pittman one. They took the ball. Up. Yeah, Pittman took it off. Passed it over to Manning. But they dominated. And I think tonight, the thing Maryland's going to have to do, Jim, is come out as they did last night and show supremacy right away. Albert King had another great game last night, over 20 points. There's the Maryland team. Another little story about the uniforms that we'll get into a little later. But we can tell you that Maryland's gold, new gold uniforms, maybe a good little charm, were taken out of the action tonight. Well, they're going to have to wear white because Dean decided that he had the choice to wear the blue. I told Lefty, just tell him the white ones are lost. You know, you don't even want to wash those gold ones. And uh, he kind of kidded about it. He said, I'm thinking about it, but he is going to go ahead and obey by the rules. The University of North Carolina had a very emotional victory, defeating Wake Forest. Had to come from behind to do it in the final minutes. Never led by more than one point this entire ball game. And what action at the end of the game, Bones? Oh, it was just absolutely tremendous and action that you see here. And watch this ball going. That's Helms on the floor with the ball. And watch Black roll over the top of him. Now he jumps on top of him. Now the ball goes free. There's a dive after it. And you'll uh, see Perkins pick it up. As a key play, Billy, because Wake Forest had a one-point lead right there with just 30 seconds to go. It was a key play. I was kidding some of the Carolina coaches about it today. They said, yeah, but they said Black got fouled first. I said, yeah, but he sure made up with him about four more on the way down the court. Well, you're going to see the winning shot here by Mike Pepper. And uh, this comes here just in the final second of the play. North Carolina trailing by a point. All right. Now, you, what you're going to see is Perkins pass it off to Braddock. And Braddock's going to go under the legs. Uh, that shot right there was by Pepper, and that was a winning basket. Still eight seconds to go, though, for Wake Forest. Well, one of the things, of course, working against Wake here is that Carolina was not in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and that was a very, very smart foul. Wake Forest did not go to the foul line, obviously, and it, broke, it broke their momentum going to court and just left them with four seconds to get something off. And that was a desperation shot by Frank Johnson that missed at the gun. North Carolina won by one point. That's why they're here, to take on the Maryland Terrapins for the championship. And the players are on the floor right now, and we'll be back with a tip-off and the opening lineups of this championship in a moment after these messages. And now the final huddle-ups here. The University of Maryland under Lefty Drizel and the University of North Carolina around Dean Smith. They'll be meeting here in the championship finals of the ACC for a seventh time. No, Maryland's won only one. That was in Mike in 1958. Lefty has never been able to defeat the Tar Heels for the title. Again, here's Mar Brooks. For tonight's championship game of the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament between the Terrapins of Maryland and the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Here are the starting lineups. First at the guard for Maryland, number 10, 6'1 senior from High Aspire, Pennsylvania, Greg Manning. For North Carolina, number 11, 6'3 senior from Vienna, Virginia, Mike Pepper. The other guard for Maryland, number 15, the 6'4 junior from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Reggie Jackson. For North Carolina, number 21, 6'2 junior from the Bronx, New York, Jimmy Black. Starting at center for the Terrapins, number 52, 6'8 junior from Rocky Mount, North Carolina, Buck Williams. At center for the Tar Heels, number 41, 6'9 freshman from Latham, New York, Sam Perkins. 
The forwards for the Terrapins. Number 25, 6'7", senior from Baltimore, Maryland, Ernest Graham. For the Tar Heels, number 30, 6'6 six, six and a half senior from Gray, Georgia, Al Wood. At the other forward for Maryland, number 55, 6'6 six, six senior from Brooklyn, New York, Albert King. For the Tar Heels, number 52, 6'8 six, six, sophomore, Gastonia, North Carolina, James Worthy. The Terrapins head coach, Charles Lefty Drizel. The head coach of the Tar Heels, Mr. Dean Smith. Look at those totals, 849 victories between them. Jim, they're two of the top coaches, obviously, in the United States. Both not only have good teams, but they have basketball programs. That's why they're back year in, year out. And that's the, that's the mark of uh, real legitimate success. So can you put together a program, not just a team? Here's another point, too, uh, Bones. North Carolina won both games over Maryland this year. Almost identical scores, 75-66. 76-63, that old case of uh, trying to beat a good team three times. Well, and this afternoon, you know, I believe Villanova beat Syracuse twice during the season, but this afternoon, Syracuse won the ball game. Let me say something about these two coaches. And both, I agree with what both of you said about these two coaches, but Lefter Duzell has built, rebuilt a program at two schools, and that's a tough job to do. Two entirely different type schools. Earlier this year, I wrote a, a newspaper article, Jim Rankin, the guys that are the best program builders in the nation. I think I had Lefty about five or six in there. Uh, he certainly knows how to do it. One of the great recruiters, and of course, everybody notes that Coach Smith is one of the most innovative guys in the history of college basketball. All right, and they have excellent teams here. Really primed to go all out, I'm sure. Sam Perkins, a great freshman, one of the best in the country against Buck Williams, and the tip's going to be controlled by Maryland. Out, oh, Albert King can't get it. And it was hit last by University of North Carolina. So Maryland gets the ball to start the game here from Capitol Center. Over 19,000 on hand for this championship game. There's Winner. the jump out of the zone right away by North Carolina. Inside Albert King, quick shot. That's there. good. Goal tending by Perkins. King gets the basket. Buck Williams would have tapped it in anyway. Excellent call right here. Albert King with that great vertical leap. Now, you saw the ball hit off the glass. Excellent camera shot right there. On its way down after it hit off the glass, Perkins nipped it. Goal 10. And from that defense by Nora by Maryland against North Carolina. Albert King with Wood got screened off. James uh, Worthy on the inside. Ernie Graham throw. Here's Worthy up over Graham. Rebounders down to Albert King. Quick pass to Manning, but they're back. North Carolina is against the release. They'll charge it down on Manning. They just lost his footing. It wasn't a deliberate thing. He wasn't trying to go by. But the key was how North Carolina was back. Well, they, they are going to be back. They're one of the best teams against transition. But the good thing that Lefty probably saw out of that play was not the walk, obviously, but the fact that his team is going to be able to fire that ball down the court. That's the key. They must be in transition. Two to nothing. Maryland leads. Well, a full I'm court pressing down here by Reggie Jackson. Yeah, I'm surprised. by Jimmy Black. Jimmy, Jim, I was surprised Graham didn't go down there and get worthy because uh, they were Jackson was causing some trouble. North Carolina screening here with a lot of movement against the man from now. There's Perkins on the inside. Rebound, Buck Williams soars high to get it for Maryland. Here comes the Terrapins on the quick break. This is Albert King. King lobs on the inside, taken away by Pepper. Back the other way for North Carolina. In the middle, Al Wood under the Perkins. Blocked by King with a foul. Now that was a beautiful move. Moving that ball to the middle to Al Woods. Made the fast break possible. Boy, oh, both teams going up and down the court. There's the ball that slipped out of... Uh, Albert King's hand. Now, Pepper goes ahead and hits the ball, just what you're talking about, Coach. Back to Wood. He gets it inside to Perkins, who can really run up and down the court. And King hits it. Sam Perkins, a rookie of the year of the Atlanta Coast Conference from Latham, New York. Sixth, uh, ten freshman. Seventh in the country in field goal percentage. Ordinarily, he's an outstanding free throw shooter, but he really drilled that one. You know, that last shot he took uh, from the floor, he's first time I've ever seen him spin opposite of his left hand to put it up. He's got to be aware of Buck Williams. Here's a full court zone trap. Two to one to score. Maryland leading by a point. Well, you get it back against what is a passive uh, zone press. North Carolina fake kind of a double team jump and then drop back in the zone. Ernie Graham up in the air with a jump shot hitting. That 
that's a critical shot for Maryland because Graham's the kind of guy, if he can get it rolling, is hard to handle. Straight shooter makes it a four to one lead. Three points on top is Maryland. North Carolina's yet to hit a field goal. They won about six minutes later. Al Wood gets it up over Buck Williams and where they taps it in. Ball bounded a long ways. That offensive rebounding is what told the tale last night's ball game. North Carolina dominated the boards. Here's a double team jump on Reggie Jackson, who spots it immediately. He's got Graham open. And now here's uh, Albert King out of the corner. A little short rebound. Buck Williams takes it down. Stolen by Pepper. That's two for Pepper. Twice he's taking it off the fingertips of Buck Williams. North Carolina could go ahead. And it's Perkins out of the corner. And North Carolina leads five to four. Downtown jumper by 6'11. Back in a 2-1-2 two, two zone. Maryland's going to have to defeat the zone, obviously, to get North Carolina playing anything else. Maryland has a fine penetrating team out there right now. There goes Graham for a layout, missed and taps, and then it's down by Wood. He swings it back in bounds by Albert King with another set for Maryland. Here's King under. Buck Williams slammed up. That was important. Maryland really needed that because they fouled up about three times before. That was a smart play by Al Wood, too. When he realized he was going out of bounds, he threw it towards his basket so that Maryland didn't have an opportunity to make a steal right under the basket. Not the alert play of King. Converted it anyway. Six to five. Maryland back on tape. Al Wood trying to go back to on King. A lot of movement on the man for man. Here's Wood with a solid screen, but he gives it up the block. Perkins. Buck Williams cutting him off. There's the man of the hero last night. Mike Pepper hit with eight seconds to go to win the game. And it was a foul on a Manning. No, I think it's behind Graham, Jeff. Is it going to be on Graham? Okay. Yep. He's trying to beat uh, Worthy to the spot. Ernest Graham would be no free throwing here, I'm sure. That's the third team foul, however, against Maryland. Dean Smith, Tar Heels, not fouled as yet in the game. Six to five. The no, there's, there can't be there can't be a shot oh, here. There's not going to be. Well, a shot. what happened? Lefty thought because of where Worthy was standing, the way they were lined up, he thought it was going to be a shot. No, no shot there. Now Maryland's in a zone here from the inbounds pass, which is over the baseline. North Carolina will go to a different attack. Worthy, ah, unusual shot for him. He got Very that one very A little anxious to begin with. Very unusual shot for Ernie Graham fires it back to Jackson. Now Graham. Here's Ernie trying to get open. On a fallaway shot. Rebound taken by Perkins. North Carolina on the break, and he walks with the ball. That was a great play by Graham. What a smart play by Graham. You can see lefty tell him, just calm down, Ernie. You don't have to put it all up. <laughs> You're right, Bill. You're right. Six to five. Somebody once said Ernie Graham's the only player who knows keep both teams in the game at the same time. I'll follow that. Six to five. Maryland by a point. Here, lefty says we're not going against the zone. Strategy starts already. We're into the game four minutes. As a James Worthy breaks up the pass. They tried to go back door. Ernie Graham down here pressing on Jimmy Black. Ernie's going to make a foul. Sure is the world. Well, he's showing some kind of quickness from an athletic standpoint. Five second count. Great the play. Jump ball. Boy, he's showing right something here. When you're six foot seven and weigh about 210 and you can stay with a guy as quick as Black, you're some kind of athlete. All right, we got a timeout now. 15:39 to go in the first half. Dean Smith is upset, but it's going to be oh, he's hot. when we come back with Maryland leading by a point. Graham on Black now. Graham was about six seven, and I think Black must be five ten or something like that. And see how quick he's coming. And watch the referee's hand if you can, because Dean Smith's going to disagree with it, and he called a jump ball. Five seconds. All he had to do was stay within what three feet of him. Well, Dean said he broke the uh, well too late. The count. You know, I, I didn't think the referee was counting, but out of the corner of the screen, yeah. you could see he was on top of his game right there. I think Dean Dean was incorrect on that one. There's a tap uh, on a good cheap. Stolen away. Jimmy Black. Graham to get it up by Graham, and Buck Williams will have it for Maryland. Oh, Ernie Graham's getting in the thick of things defensively here. The early part of the game, six to five, Maryland lead. Here goes Graham the other way with a top jump. He said before the show starts that Ernest can just go ahead and take a game over. He hadn't had one of those kind of games in a long time, and I'm sure that people in the Carolina bench are sitting there and saying, we hope it's not tonight. Eight to five, three-point lead. Jimmy Black from the perimeter hitting to North Carolina. They're not guarding him very closely. Ernie Graham now being cut off this time. Buck Williams on the feet inside. Right back to Ernest Graham. Outside shot by Ernie. 
Graham opening up. Six points for Graham, the senior from Baltimore. Ten to seven, Maryland for a three-point lead, and it's the third time they've had it. Now Wood didn't get on track last night. Perkins, oh, good nice fake by Perkins inside. And Wood is right there to put it up. And here's a over the back, and what's going to be? Going to be on by Albert King, second one on him. A little bit delayed call. Lefty's upset that it was a delayed call, but in fairness, the, the official right under the basket was kind of screened out, and he got good coverage from the trailing official. You'll see, there is going to be a foul on Wood's shot. Now watch this. Wood's going to go up. He's going to get hit on the hand. Watch it. Right there. See him get hit on the arm? Good call, and the official was under the basket. It was kind of screened out. His trailing official made a good play there. And that's what they should do, protect one another when they get in a position like that. Albert Wood. And it needs uh, eight points to score 1,900. Boys to win. And that'll be a foul on Worthy. Worthy went over the back of Buck Williams, trying for the rebound. First foul against North Carolina. On the back. That's what you call a great block out position by uh, Buck Williams that time. He just used his body and sealed Worthy off. Both of them extremely strong, but excellent technique. Team fouls are four to one, Maryland. That was the first one against North Carolina. Now the seven is going. Jim, Howard King came back to half court to tell Reggie Jackson that he wanted to switch men because of the two fouls he has on him. So Jackson's going to be taken for good. Pepper had his stole, but they lost him on his fingertips. Albert King was not watching Mike Pepper, looking to the inside. Albert King, quick jump shot. I was going to say, they needed to get King into the offense, and he did it himself. You see, now King is guarding Pepper. Jackson has got Wood. Kind of nice to have a guard that big that he can switch over and handle a man like Al Wood, or at least try to. Now Jackson, outstanding defensive player. Wood immediately goes to the inside. Wood pulls it down for that. I said try to, right? Wood straight into the hole. Well, it was smart play by Carolina to recognize that change in defenses and immediately go and take Jackson inside. Well, tonight, that could be a problem. There's a baseline jump shot by Albert King. Six points for King, six for Ernie Graham, the forward that produces for Maryland. The Terrapins lead by five at 14 to nine. Now they have Worthy on the inside. I Worthy spinning shot inside, tipped up, and a foul on Wood. Wood crashing the board gets his first foul. North Carolina was just amazing with their offensive rebounding oh, last night against Blake Forest. Well, you know what helps him too, Jim, is the fact, and we'll see that play into Worthy. He won't miss many of these. But that, what we're seeing North Carolina do, and they have the advantage to do, they have such great rebounding out of the three frontline guys that their guards don't have to crash the board. Albert King wide open, won't miss that one too often. Might have been too open. Rebound by Worthy. Here's North Carolina back the other way. Perkins with the left hand hook. I pick the defense back down the floor. Oh, Wood. So here we go. Wood. North Carolina right back in the game. They can pull within one. And it's Worthy. Worthy wide open inside. He's what you call a power ball. <laughs> Four straight points by North Carolina. The lead is down to one. There's a battle for loose ball. And Pepper's down with it for North Carolina. Tar Heels can take the lead. They've scored the last four points. Maryland's kind of spread out right now defensively. They're getting themselves caught. There's Perkins inside, took away by Buck Williams. Releasing his Manning. Manning oh, yeah, on quick. the break. Here's Manning. Jump shot's going to be short. Rebound put up by Jackson. And now off by Perkins. But Perkins got a piece of that, too. He is incredible how he can get from one end of the court to the other. He's the guy that missed the shot down the other end and blocked the one on the semi-break. They're going to appreciate the timeout. They're going to get the minute. Well, they got some subs coming in. I'm sure Perkins has to have a little rest. 14-13, Maryland by a point. Now Worthy hits inside. Rebound, Buck Williams rips it off for Maryland. Here's a fast break for the Terrapins. Jackson in the middle. Right side, Albert King fires it in. Coach, I like the tempo being much in the favor of Maryland right now. They can move up and down the court. This is their kind of game, and so far, North Carolina has not been able to get it slowed down. Definitely to Maryland's advantage. 16 to 13, Maryland by three. North Carolina really roared back after the letdown by five. Pepper, too long. Rebound is to Buck Williams. The tempo is really throwing off North Carolina right now. They need the time. There goes that. And a great count. Basket is going to be good. 
Good call by the official. Great play by Graham. North Carolina, Carolina really needs the timeout. Derek Walker. That's a three-point play. Here you'll see it. Jimmy Black, see, he went out and tried to make contact. It wasn't there because of Graham's ability to slide to the side. And Maryland's regained his five-point lead in 18-13, and Graham will have a chance to make it six when we come back to this timeout with 11 minutes to go in the first half. This is for the title of the Atlantic Coast Conference, and early in the game, it's Maryland right in his front. 18-13. We'll be right back here at the Capitol Center. Maryland 18, North Carolina 13. 11 minutes to go in the half. Bradley and Bounds pass. Wood, that was Al Wood picking it off. Right. They wanted him to go on and take the shot. Al didn't do it so up. We could see from the bench what they wanted him to do, but he didn't. He held it. Wait, I think that's a smart thing because had him as a no possibility of a rebound. That's some changes for North Carolina. Pete Butko, Jim Braddock, Eric Kenny, and Matt Doherty all have come in. They're leaving Perkins on the floor. No changes. One change for Maryland. Steve Rivers is any guard replacing Richard Jackson. Isn't Perkins amazing that he can stay out there and have enough stamina for a young kid to be able to go all night long? I believe he's just relaxed. And I don't know how he can play so well. And we've said so many times how fluid he is. Three-point play by Ernie Graham. Nine oh, points. That's Maryland's Graham. biggest lead. Graham's going to sit down now as Charlie Cutman replaces him. Cutman's a 6 eight junior from Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Uh, technical foul on Dean Smith. Now, what we're seeing, remember the call where he said that he didn't get the five-second count right? There was some action right underneath the basket on that last foul shot where he said his guys were getting wiped out. What you're seeing also, Bones, Deans didn't want the timeout necessarily because he gave up possession of the ball here. Could be a seven point That's play. right. He gave up possession of the ball, and you never want to get that technical call on you when you're going to have possession anyway. Never. Uh, Manning hits one of the two. Graham made a three point play. That's four points. And now Maryland gets the ball again. They can score to make it six points here without North Carolina touching the ball. Boy, Dean Smith still working the official. That's the hottest I've ever seen. Him. Yep. Still working the official. 20 to 13. Seven point lead by Maryland. And I'm going to tell you, there's some method in that madness. Right. That is the official last night in regard to the call on the sideline. Now you can look for what Dean really wanted by doing all of that. Oh, he's going to have another little talk with him. Now, what he's saying that he cannot substitute, he's going to have to put the other guys back in the game. The clock is not rolling, right? The right. clock is not moved. Worthy is going to have to go back off the floor. There has to be some action first. Billy, we used to use that. Uh, he's going to take Doherty out and not Worthy. Yeah, Worthy, right. Worthy was the guy that uh, was sitting on the bench, so Dean uh, got half, half of it. But I have never seen him quite this spot, high. He just, Bob it's Brown, Bob the Brown. score, spotted this. That's going right. to be Worthy that comes out. That's right. Why we have got a psychological warfare going here. I think that what Dean Smith is trying to do is to say to that guy, hey, you might have made a mistake last night, and I don't want you to remember last night. This is a new game, so he's getting his technical early. Exactly what but another thing he's doing, he's slowing this game down completely. Well, he's slowing the game down, now and he's psyching his players. Now, wait a minute. Now, Brady Wood, now they're leaving Worthy in. Now, let's see if they spot this. Thinking out Wood out. But Bob Bradley was semi-right. This is a lot of fun we're having here. Steve Rivers being pressed by Jimmy Braddock. Well, that's Wood, of course, trying to fight up his team. Albert King racing top of the circle, and rebound is taken off of North Carolina. Eric Kennedy. And Worthy was the guy that got the rebound. 20 to 7, the score. Maryland in the zone for the first time. Kenny Walk. 2 3 zone on the Terrapins who lead by 7. 20 to 13. Midway in the first half. About 10 and a half minutes to go. Braddock, a good outside shooter. Where are they racing inside? Left hander. A beautiful move if ever that was one. He was triangle. Yeah, 
Here's Rivers looking for the double team. Ball is bounced over and stepping out of bounds, James Worthy. Right on top of the turnover. Fisher was right on top of that one. Ten minutes to go, and the first half. Back in come Ernie Graham, get Reggie Jack. Right there was the case. You can say the Fisher was on top, but he was right down there, nose on the ball. No question. Five-point lead for Maryland. Albert King lobbing it into Buck Williams. Williams lost the ball, and Doherty comes up with it. Buck Williams went up. He's got to get in motion for that right-hand slam and fumble the ball. Pete Butko out of the free throw circle. He hasn't taken many shots this year, Jim, but he does like to shoot that little jumper from the foul line. And I'm watching him practice. He's a pretty good shooter. Yep. North Carolina now. King thinks with their defense. Coming from behind after being down by seven. Albert King should break on into the center and shoot that jumper because he's wide open in the middle. Pittman's in there now, but that's King's spot because he's so good with his shots in there. They need to break to the ball. Pittman does. Put Albert King in the foul. Here he goes. There's Albert. That's Albert King. They surrounded him now. But if he stays there, I guarantee he's going to get off the jumper from that spot. Well, he's really getting some attention, though, Bill. And the ball goes into King. You notice what happened as soon as Smith saw that Albert went in the center. He changed his defense. That's a man for man. Now what comes out on Ernie Graham. Now there's the jump switch. Graham who played guys. Now what? Breaks it up. He'll have an open lane. Six straight points. Carolina's Carolina cut it to one, 20 to 19. Carolina needs to go into the offense and stop playing predicate for the ball and out back four. Good double team. Foul. Foul for Braddock. First foul on Jimmy Braddock. Four team fouls on North Carolina. Each team now with four. And the strange part, they've done four and four. There's Al Wood again. Very dangerous pass by Graham there. Got hung up. Nobody came to the ball. Wood just slammed it through. You can't stand when you're being pressed. You've got to meet that ball. There's Buck open. Well, North Carolina really picking up defensive intensity now. North Carolina's defense has keyed his coming up. Going to get five if they're not careful. Need to go on to the basket with the ball. Merrill has become tentative here after getting the big lead. There goes Ernie Graham. Rebound will come outside to Jimmy Black for North Carolina. They can go ahead with a score. And it's Worthy firing it in. Well, that's some kind of super comeback. And remember what Dean Smith did. He kind of disrupted the whole flow of this game with those technical fouls and a timeout. And he's still working the official. And they he's come working Jimmy Bishop over. Eight minutes and four seconds to go. A timeout on the floor. The lead has been cut to one by North Carolina. 21-20. Piedmont is flying you there. Come and fly on the way your dreams are calling. Catch a cloud and grab the silver lining. We're up and coming, come along, come and share. Your world is waiting so. Uh, Virginia, this hospital room is Mr. Norman McCulloch. Enjoying the game. We hope he has a speed recovery. He's the father of Jim McCulloch of our production crew here for these telecasts. Now, this telecast is presented by the authority of the Atlantic Coast Conference and the C.D. Chesney Company. And the use of this program without written consent is prohibited. Announcers have been approved and contracted for by the C.D. Chesney Company. Maryland became a little tentative. Yeah, all of a sudden, they had the nice working margin. They were getting their penetration going well on the boards. They were doing well. They are getting open shots. And all of a sudden, North Carolina start coming out trapping, and they haven't been able to get in an offense since. Look at the trap. It's all over the floor. Double team, a foul on Jimmy Black. That'll be the second foul on He better Black. be careful. He almost got a technical foul. That'll be an inbounds pass for Maryland. North Carolina had not committed a foul when Maryland had four. Maryland still has four, and North Carolina has five. So it's coming streaks for personal fouling. North Carolina's going to drop back in the zone. Sometimes they'll jump out of here and press. Sometimes they'll stay back. But they just keep you off balance. They'll switch in those defenses. One time they're jumping out, the double team takes you out of your offense. Next time they're back in the zone. Really difficult to make adjustments. Maryland hasn't been in an offense for five minutes. Simply passing the ball around. They're not hitting anything inside. There goes Pittman for layup. Good move to the basket. Charlie Pittman sends Maryland back in the lead, 22 to 21. I bet you the next time they come over half court, the trap is back on. He doesn't want Black to get in foul trouble. He doesn't want to get in that one-in-one -one situation. Dean Smith doesn't. Here's Doherty out of the corner. 
Rebound tipped up by, put up by Worthy, and we've got a call goal tending on Pittman. Worthy gets his 10th point of the half, and North Carolina leads again. Now Lefty's starting to work him. I, I feel sorry for that poor official. <laughs> he, he gets the ball out of the court. He'd rather have a wife that nags constantly than what's going to happen to him tonight. Seven minutes to go in the first half. 23-22, North Carolina leads change hands five times in the first 13 minutes. Back in the 1-3-1 matchup, Worthy really patrols that back line back there. Big enough to come out to the corner to stop the jump shot, big enough to rebound when it's right underneath the basket. He just... And when you have a big guard like Doherty, you can play that. Manning, and he's fouled by Al Wood. That'll be two free throws for Greg Manning, and that's 16 fouls on North Carolina. They hit the limit here with 626 to go on the half. This will be two shots to Greg Manning. Outstanding free throw, 82% on the year. One for two tonight. He shot those uh, two technical free throws earlier. He actually has the same free throw percentage as Albert King. That ties it. You know, Jim, Manning's percentage not as good as last year. One of the reasons I think for that, he loves the transition game, and Maryland's been cut off of that some. And he, when he'd get in the flow, he'd have those streaks of foul shooting. This year, he had to play a lot more half-court offense, and his foul shooting percentage went down also. Maryland pressed, uh, didn't work as the pass went through James Worthy's hand. Hit up Bernie Graham, buying it back to Jackson, and Maryland's going to hold it up. Good play, Jackson. There was yeah. nothing there. He could have taken it down and created something. Probably been a mistake. Smart play. Albert King is on the bench. It's on his feet leading cheers. There goes Manning penetrating, feeding underneath the ground. And they've got a charging foul on Manning. And now that's two fouls on Greg Manning. What a great charge taken by Perkins. You know, very difficult to penetrate on through the entire zone. Now watch Perkins. He just held his ground in there. Not much that Manning could do. Manning goes straight up. He has a good play, but they know he has a tendency to go forward with a jump. Mike Perkins has returned. Or rather, uh, Mike Pepper returned from North Carolina. 24-23. Maryland leading. Trying to screen Buck Williams down on the baseline was Worthy. Back to go inside. Now they got Wood from the perimeter. In and out. Rebound by Maryland. They need to up get, by Charlie Pippen. They need to get Buck Williams into the flow of this ball game. Albert King sent down with two fouls. There's another foul. This one's going to be on Worthy, and that'll be two on Worthy. So Blackwood and Worthy, two apiece for North Carolina in the first 15 minutes. And they're in the one and one already. Here we're going to see Ernie Graham takes it down to no man's land, and there comes Worthy right over the shoulder. Three of the, or rather, three of the top five scores in all-time history at the University of Maryland are on, on this ball club. Here comes Albert King back in. Let's see who he's going to take out of there. He's one of the three. He's coming in from Manning. Manning, Graham, and King are all in the top five. King is second to John Lucas. Now, with this particular lineup, Ernie Graham's going to move to the backcourt in the place that he played some uh, year before last. One and one to Ernie Graham. He gets the bonus. Matt Doherty on Dean Smith. Seeing that, he's going to bring in a bigger guard. So Doherty, who's 6'6", six, six, comes in replacing Pepper. Well, I think he realized he doesn't have to worry about pressing another guard, so he's just going ahead and coming back and playing with his big team. Maryland picks up full court. Back to three-point lead, 26 to 23. Doherty spots the press, knocked down. Grab now by Black. Boy, Black did an alert job getting that ball back to North Carolina. Doherty breaks inside. Oh, he lost oh, dribble. Yep. Double dribble by Black. Yeah, he lost it. He had it knocked out of his hands. Now, you're allowed to fumble recover, but you can't well, start where he lost. Trouble. See, he lost it there, Jim. He's by himself. Then he started all over again. 26-23. Still in that 1-3-1 zone with Worthy down on the baseline. Albert King back in for Maryland. Maryland now looks like it's uh, back in its attacking uh, posture that it had early in the game. They got a very tentative after taking a 20-13 lead. Lefty says we might not play against that defense. He's going to attack it. Yep. That's going to be Ernie Graham, top of the circle. All right, Graham having a big first half, 13 points. 
23. Maryland lead is back to five. They've scored six unanswered points. Be kind of fitting if Ernest Graham had the game and he said, Coach ain't letting me shine, and boy, he's doing it tonight. Sam Perkins short. Comes right down to Doherty. Fires it up, but he is fouled on the play. Boy, it's a great pump fake by Doherty. That I asked Ernie tonight before the ball game, I said, are you right? And he said, yes. Just a minute ago, he looked over here and winked at me. Well, there was some controversy. Uh, Look at the fake. That's what. Fine play by Doherty. Only thing he could do, just keeping that ball alive, moving it around a little bit. Got the but foul. Williams getting a rest. Well, Williams goes out. Taylor Baldwin replaces him. There's Baldwin, born in Bombay, India. Had a medical uh, hardship and gave it up himself voluntarily to come back and play here at the tail end of the season. Doherty hasn't been shooting well throughout the tournament. You can see how important the emphasis lefties had on on rebounding. He's keeping a big lineup out there as much as possible. 28-24. North Carolina is one of the better rebounding teams in the conference. Here's the trap again. Proved that last night. Boy, Graham waited just the right moment to get that ball to Jackson. Graham is open. Look out. He is hot. 24. Maryland back to a six-point lead. The biggest was seven. North Carolina rallied from that to take the lead. One, two, two zone. Jordy's cut underneath the neck. Perkins left hand. Oh, oh boy, is he really patented that shot. You let him get position, you're dead duck. Here's Perk. the trap again. Graham sees the trap. Now he waits. It's kind of funny. I heard a fan behind. Get it over the line, Ernie. That's exactly what you don't want to do. Once you get over the line and use up your dribble, you want to make that defense commit before you commit. Our count was on Jackson. Graham nice. feeds inside the ball. With, ball with jump shot. And there's tipped up, kept alive. Now pulled down by Willie Ball with fouls. He's lucky that Baldwin got it instead of Pittman. Well, you always have to remember as an offensive player who you're throwing the pass to. Now, Baldwin, Taylor Baldwin does not have good hands. That's always been a problem of his, and that pass was perfect if you were throwing it to Buck Williams, but not to Taylor Baldwin. Baldwin, we said, was injured earlier, had received a hardship, could have come back and played next year, but coach asked if he wanted to play at the end of the season. He said, if you need me, and they said, well, he could use it. He said, OK, so he gave up his hardship to play these last few games. Now what? One and one. Yeah. Hey, down Ernie Graham. Boy, the three throwing is now hurting North Carolina. They've missed five out of seven. Never seen it that poor. Albert King's got pepper. There he goes. King, double pump, blocked, and rebound is going to be taken down by James Worthy. North Carolina can pull it to two. Now Wood, wide open. Rebound by Taylor Baldwin. Here's to Jackson. Here's Jackson feeding now. Nice! Smile back by Pippa. Oh, what a great play, play by Jackson. Black. Third foul on Jimmy Black and a slam dunk by Pippa. That could be a very crucial play. Boy, give Jackson some credit. He orchestrated the fast break. If you'll see him here, he's looking at waving behind him. He's saying, go behind me. I'm going to hit you on that side. Line pass. That was a great play. And some kind of dunk showing you Pippa's a great athlete. Look at Reggie Jackson here. That was a smart play by Jackson. He didn't have the lane filled to his right. He waved with his left hand to Pittman, say, come on in behind me, I'll get you the ball. Pittman listened to him completely. Fine, fast break. Billy, you notice he saw him out of the corner of his eyes. He was going to the middle, and he was telling him, for crying out loud, fill that lane, baby. Great play, play possibility. Rebound, Buck Williams. Here's to Ernie Graham. Let's it go. And Ernie jumped five feet off the ground after he hit that duck shot. He's having quite a half. Eight-point lead by Maryland, 34-26. And North Carolina wants timeout. Timeout for the Tar Heels. And Maryland is on its biggest hot streak of the first half. A lead by eight, 34-26. Programs an excellent souvenir of this tournament here in Landover, and to obtain yours, send three dollars to ACC Tournament Program, Post Office Box 5997, Raleigh, North Carolina, zip code 27650. About two or three weeks for delivery, and we'll have a great souvenir. Even Bones McKinney got one this year. I got one. Uh, taking it home, Dad. 
I've got to get <laughs> two for my son Mark, so uh, remind me before I leave this game. Yeah, there'll be certain ones will throw them down. That's right. <laughs> 34 26, Maryland's biggest lead. North Carolina called timeout to settle down, but their point guard, Jimmy Black, has three fouls. Jimmy Braddock is in. They get worthy that shot. He'll take it. Well, Maryland's been playing that tough zone back there with a the big lineup. Braddock has an excellent touch on the outside. Now, Never. what you're seeing, Braddock is going to pick up Reggie Jackson all over the court. Figuring they're going to put the ball in his hands, bring it up, but. Graham, who's been doing everything tonight, is now helping out of the guard position. Petman on the ball, barely stolen away, loose for them, goes to put. Buck Williams says, I know I can out jump this guy with this tied up. Now, let's see. Here's where Maryland should quickly jump the position underneath the basket right. so that they could get, they know they've got the tap controlled, but everybody kind of took their time, and now North Carolina's got the spots. Buck Williams looking out of the corner of his eye. He's got Albert uh, King over the left. Well, I don't know why Pittman's moving. He's helping out North Carolina. Now, now he, he needs to tip the ball between King and Graham now, or between, they're, they're playing a defensive tip, North Carolina is. And there's going to be a by circle violation by Perkins. No, what? That's right. There's going to be a circle violation. You cannot move on that around there and get into the circle before that ball is tapped, and that's what happened to Perkins. They, they realized they weren't going to get the tap anyway, so they went ahead and cheated on it. Maryland gets the ball with a six-point lead, 34-28. Buck Williams is going to fix his shoelaces here, and that'll bring uh, Greg Manning back in the lineup, replacing Albert King, so maybe a little ball handling uh, is put in here by... Well, plus the fouls, Jim. He's got two fouls on with a minute 39 to go. Lefty wants to make sure he doesn't pick up that third. There's the lob to Buck Williams inside, batted out by Worthy. Oh, Maryland will put it back in play. Just a tad too high, Jim. That's all, maybe up two inches. Well, you can see Buck Williams signaling for the lob, the alley-oop, they call it. It's tough to throw a lob from that far out, though, because the defense has time to react. All right, North Carolina really putting on pressure. Charging foul on Jackson. Oh, Reggie Jackson close to a technical foul. Uh, he really protested. That'll be ball control. There'll be no shooting here. Now, and the defensive player with the player, ball who fouled. Watch this. A defensive player must have both feet planted in a normal position and then square up. It wasn't true, though. North Carolina gets a turnover on the foul. They trail by six. They get by very close here. A minute 25 to go in the first half. 34 28. Where they lob inside. Feeds it out oh, of the Perkins for the slam. A beautiful fun. He knew where he was. 34 30. Maryland's lead has been whittled down to four points. Still over a minute to go in the first half. This is tough man to man. Looking for help. Almost got the five second jump call. Ernie Graham has had a hot hand going here in the first half. Braddock doing a good job here, putting on a lot of pressure. 50 seconds to go in the half. Maryland would like to just hold it down and take the last shot. Graham's going to take it. Yeah, there's Ernie. He's open. He's hot. Hey, 19 points and a half for Ernest Graham, 36-30. We saw him get 44, and at halftime, he was practicing shooting the ball from out of bounds. That's how hot he can get. Braddock, and there's Braddock being fouled by Graham. Second foul on Ernest Graham, who has been the sensation of this half. Number 25, a senior for Baltimore. Leads the team in assists, believe it or not. He's 6'7 forward. Can sometimes swing to guard. Changes will bring in uh, Matt Doherty, replacing Al Wood. Wood has two fouls, and Dean Smith don't want to risk a third on his All-American Olympic star before the half ends. 26 seconds to go in the half. Braddock on the line for the one and one. Jim, you've talked about Ernest Graham leading the team in, in assists. His stats all the way down the line are great. He's shooting 51% on the year, 73% for the foul line. He's got 155 rebounds and scoring 14 a game. Wow, that's uh, quite a career right there for one year. Another break for North Carolina as a Maryland violated the lanes on the rebound, and Braddock, who missed the free throw, gets another chance, and he did hit him still to the books. Okay. Well, the two times that's been called tonight, the ball, the fellas can go in the lane uh, immediately after the ball is released from the shooter. I believe they forgot it. 36 to 31, 36 32. North Carolina cuts it to two, still in the press. 20 seconds to go on the half. Cuts it to four, 36 32. They got Doherty here to guard Ernest Graham, who 
He's had about everything he's thrown up. Boy, that was a dangerous pass. That was real dangerous. Six Five seconds. seconds at the game of all the ground. That's Reggie Jackson takes the shot. And only one second, not enough time to fire the ball. And Maryland will have a lead, but only four points as they go off the floor here at halftime. And a real battle, a classic game thus far for the ACC championship. That's the end of the first half of play. The score, Maryland 36, North Carolina 32. We're back in a moment with our halftime show. Some chicken arrives at the start. Here at the action of the first half. Buck Williams playing on the inside. There was that play we had earlier with Reggie Jackson. Super feed on in there to Pittman, and that was that fast break where he orchestrated it all the way down the court. Fine play. And now we're going to show you the main violation that cost Maryland two points of its uh, lead because Braddock here missed the front end of the one and one. Yep. Oh, yeah, the violation. On the money, Buck Williams stepped right in there. Uh, no question. Wasn't even close. Yep. And it probably wasn't necessary, but North Carolina went on to cash in, too, and now we pause for station identification. This is the Atlantic Coast Conference Television Network. Pro Shop. Gentlemen here that we'd like to pay special thanks to for a season we've had. That, of course, tribute to Albert King. But with uh, Maryland leading North Carolina 36-32, let's take a little time out the game here at halftime and say thanks to some individual universities who have helped us bring you Another season of ACC basketball from Clemson University. A special thanks to President Bill Atchley, the faculty representative, Kenneth Victory, who's been with us many times for presentations, and athletic director Bill McClellan. A fine one. That, uh, by the way, is a school that's still having hopes of getting his team in the playoffs. Well, I, think, I think they have a very outside chance, particularly because of all the upsets in the other tournaments. They've got a, you're talking about the NCAA. Right, I definitely, definitely you know the, the NIT. NIT. And from Duke University, a team that uh, made quite a battle of it here in the ACC in the late season, President Terry Sanford, former governor, faculty representative William Bradford, and director of athletics Tom Butters, who was a pretty fair country baseball pitcher this time. Right. And that, uh, I think that uh, Coach K, I'll call him instead of Shashevsky. Uh, Did I do that right, Bill? That's right. And Butters, the only guy I know of affiliated with the ACC, can hit a golf ball farther than Bones. He can hit it <laughs> nine miles farther than Bones. From Georgia Tech, President Joseph M. Pettit, faculty representative William M. Sangster, and uh, athletic director, an old familiar face in the ACC, Homer Rice, who was at North Carolina before he had his uh, turns with Rice University and the Cincinnati Bengals. And they're looking for a new basketball coach. I was talking to him before the game, and he's going to go off all out to get that program where it needs to be. The University of Maryland being represented here by Lefty Grizzell's team in the finals. President Robert uh, L. Gluckstein. Buckstern, the uh, faculty representative is William Taft. And now back director Jim Keyhole, who retired a few years ago, went over to Maryland Shore, and now he is back uh, again. When Carl James left, they said, come on, Jim. And I think Jim had found out he didn't particularly like to be retired anyway. Great, great track coach. The University of North Carolina, this uh, year's other finalist. President is Christopher Fordham. The uh, faculty representative is Benson Wilcox, who was with us last night to make an award. And the young director of athletics, John Swafford, who was a good football player, but this is an indication of how youth is moving into athletics. He's paid his dues, though. He's young in age, but he's very old in experience, and he paid his dues and is doing an excellent job at the University of North Carolina. From, from North Carolina State University in Raleigh, the president, Joab L. Thomas, faculty representative, Robert S. Bryan, and director of athletics, Willis Casey, one of the most brilliant athletic administrators I've ever known. People in the ACC will never know how much that man has done to make this one of the first class conferences uh, in the nation. And I know one year he was criticized at some uh, length about such situation. It had it been for Willis Casey, UNCC would never have been the NCAA that year. Super swimming coach. The University of Virginia, President Frank L. Herford, Jr. is quite a fan. Faculty representative, uh, Dean Allen Williams, who was with us last night. The acting athletic director is Jim West, because Richard Schultz will come from Cornell on July first to take over as the newly appointed director of athletics there. That's from Charlottesville, uh, Virginia, and uh, they'll have a team headed by Ralph Sampson going to the playoffs. And from Wake Forest University, here's some familiar names for you guys. Well, there's Dr. Scales, and Bones, I'll let you go on. You were associated well, with that man for a long time. Well, faculty chairman of athletics, John Sawyer. I thought we called him Jack Sawyer. And, and, and Gene Hook's and athletic director. Hooks, who has a uh, baseball background. Oh, yeah. I have to tell a story on Dr. Scales. After Wake Forest beat North Carolina in that game at Wake Forest, he said, 
You know, I love listening to that game and listening to Woody last night. And I said, Dr. Scales, Woody is the Carolina announcer. He said, yeah, but when we're beating them, I like to listen to him. <laughs> oh, well, gentlemen, we thank you very much. I will return with more halftime activities after this important message. Houston Tower, Piedmont 321. We're In the past now. few years at Piedmont, we've added a lot of new dots to our map. It's another pretty day on the Gulf. We'll be in Tampa right on time. A lot of times we fly in non-stop where other airlines don't. We are starting our descent into the New York area. You should be able to see the Statue of Liberty off your left. So in 80 cities, no wonder they call us the up-and-coming airline. Welcome to Dallas-Fort Worth. We hope you'll fly with us again real soon. This spring, there's a fresh new look in sportswear. Presenting the 81 and a half sports, Hard top from Toyota, the very latest in sporty good looks. The new roof line, open, airy. The interior, beautifully smart. And the trunk, very private. But best of all, beneath its sporty exterior, this is a Toyota Corolla. And it acts like one. Oh, 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 new Corolla! Half-time score for the Atlantic Coast Conference Championship tonight before better than 19,000 at Capitol Center near the nation's capital. Maryland 36, University of North Carolina 32. And now a special salute to the men who made all these pictures possible all year, our production staff of the ZD Chesney Company. And now we're halfway through for the ACC Championship, two of the top teams uh, during the regular season, although not the two top, uh, top two, North Carolina and Maryland. Certainly were picked uh, very high in the preseason. Matter of fact, Maryland was picked number one, North Carolina uh, and Virginia share the number two spot. But here we are with 20 minutes to go Maryland leading 36 32 and the final chapter of the story is coming right up. The second half of this game is brought to you by the Pilot Life Insurance Company. All right, Ali Farns will award a plaque in recognition the most valuable player as I understand from both teams. For tonight's championship game is selected by the announcers. Holly Farns will also award a $1,000 scholarship through the offices of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Jim, did they ever get it straight yesterday on the, the squad? Did we get the Maryland squad, the MVP? No, it had to be Albert King. It so we're just kind of putting a footnote in there for Lefty and the other boys. That's fine. Footnote only. That's it. An asterisk, Bones. Is that what? I can't say that. I'm not going to try. <laughs> Second half coming on now. Four points is not much of a lead, but now Maryland has it. 36-32. The biggest lead was eight. North Carolina is led by no more than one at any time in the first half. Three fouls on Jimmy Black, the point guard of North Carolina. Nobody else with a more than two. Both of them using a defensive tap. Boy, and that stats for the first half, uh, it was that front line for North Carolina, and then it was basically King and Graham for Maryland as far as all the stats are concerned. Graham with a great first half, and here's James Worthy who had a good first half bringing it right in, but decides to pull it back out. North Carolina will set it up, go to their offense, man for man by Maryland. Four-point lead by the Terrapins. I wonder what Perkins could really do if he really wanted to go out and take those shots. They got Ernie Graham guarding uh, James Worthy. Albert King back on Al Wood. Ernie's doing a lot of talking right now. He's talking to him. Yeah, he's got some nervous exhaustion there. He's going to try to get rid of it. Al Wood was contested, but he threw it in anyway. Down to two immediately, 36 to 34. Here's that jump defense, and North Carolina used it so well in the first half, actually got him back in the game with it. Reggie Jackson picks up. That's Ernie Graham. Let's see if he's still hot. Yep. He didn't warm. He didn't, he didn't put any cold water on his hands during the half. 21 Might points. For Lefty, that was the most important shot of the game for Ernest to get off the track here to start the second half as well. 38-34. Buck Williams scored only two points in the first half. Jimmy Black on the outside. Why both teams have come back hot. They're going to bomb from long away. And right to open up those zones. Ernie Graham breaks on the inside. Hits Greg Manning for a long run, and it's four for four. That's his first two of the night. He was 0 for 1 in the first half. 40-36. Two teams answering, answering the opening salvos here in the opening minutes of the second half. Each two for two for the field. You can't keep depending on that kind of shot, though. He's got Buck. That's against Perkins. He Buck probably got hit the first time around. You know, like you say all the time, Coach, they always see the second one. That's Buck's right. talking about it right now. Personal foul, first one on Buck Williams. Key figure for Maryland, their leading rebounder. Oh. 
Inbounds pass almost broken up by Albert King. Backs off now as North Carolina goes against the zone. Nobody's missed a shot yet in the second half. Feed head to Wood. Blocked in there with a foul on King. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Let's, let's see that. That's going to be the third on King, and he was way up, perfectly timed on this play. Now watch it. Excellent maneuver against the zone by North Carolina. A little triangle. Now watch this. Woods up. Here's King. That is a good block. I mean, you can't have it any cleaner than that. The fans who are sitting in here watching the replay inside the gym didn't agree with it either. Two shots to Al Wood. I think sometimes they just anticipate there's going to foul. Well, I, yeah, I don't think they figured that a man could possibly get up there and make that block, but it was a very clean block. 40 38 North Carolina back within two. They have a double team trap now. Albert King comes down to help. Here's King, fires it all away. He was wide open, and he tried to get a buck with him to throw it away. Yeah, one, one dribble too many. He overpassed, but Albert King will have a tendency to do that every once in a while. And really, for Maryland, if they're going to get themselves another run, they probably have to get Albert in the offense some. He's been kind of quiet. 40 38, North Carolina tied up. That was the first mistake by either team here in the second half, and it's by Maryland. Opens the door. And James Worthy fires it up on the inside, and he missed on the play, and he's fouled. He got, he got Ernie Graham right on his hip, right where he wanted him. He used him like a swivel chair. That's three fouls on Ernie Graham. Now it's Maryland in trouble. Yep, and it's that front line from the University of North Carolina just continually keeps working on him. The best front line in college basketball. That's a solid you've statement, seen, Bill. You've seen more than I have, huh? Yep. I, I don't think that there's a better front line in college basketball than Woodworthy and Perkins. 40-39. James Worthy can tie the score, which would wipe out an eight-point Maryland lead. Went back into the first half. Score is tied for the first time of the ball game. Maryland really needs to get something going. Well, they're out of their offense because of that trapping defense. They just can't get into an offensive swing. Weak side pass to Ernie Graham. Uh, Graham has been hot tonight, and that's one of his rare misses. North Carolina could go ahead, and they got Al Wood breaking, and he walks. Oh, that was a costly turnover. Yep, Wood was kind of looking out of the corner of his eye to make a pass right off the long pass. Lost a little concentration there. Lefty Joe Grizzell just asked his team to spread out a little bit. Take their time, get away from these double teams and the North Carolina defense. They move like molasses in January when they're coming after the ball. That's our problem. Now here goes a uh, jump shot in there. It's a missed rebound by Al Wood. Boy, Manny doesn't come up that short that often. Well, what's happened is that that defense has taken Maryland totally out of any offensive concept. North Carolina, as it did in the second half. What they're going to get is going to be from Scramble. King will come back off his defensive play. Al Perkins hooks on the inside. 11 points for freshman Sam Perkins, and North Carolina's in the lead. It's biggest lead of the game. 42-40 at Maryland. Asked for timeout. So it's North Carolina that grabs the momentum. Early in the second half with 16.38 to go. The Tar Heels once down by eight. They're up by two. 42-40. the championships the Atlantic Coast Conference the track and field will could uh, be contested Duke University April 17th and 18th tennis championship down at Clemson University April 17th through the 19th and the baseball title will be decided at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill April 22nd through the 25th right here the basketball titles on the line Maryland has lost the lead and North Carolina has its biggest lead of the night and there's the reason they've gone to an aggressive defense and it's put Maryland off stride. You notice what Lefty's done. He's put Albert King right on the foul line. Going to break him up into that trap. Now North Carolina jumps back into the 1-3-1. One, one. Now Deer Steele. A little more patience now with the Maryland team. They're down by two. See, Jimmy Black knows that Albert King's coming up there, so he's laying off Reggie Jackson. But Jackson ought to take up that slack, right. and he should move right in on him. He's got to move in. There's Albert King open. Goes up on the inside. Jackson gets it back. Here comes Buck Williams hooking the inside. That was important because Buck has not been in the offense. Boy, that shot, the half hook by Perkins and then right back by Williams. It's the new shot that you see so much in college basketball now that the young players are developing. Not a jump shot, not a hook. 
High score at 42 all. Maryland back in the zone defense. Respecting North Carolina's awesome front line. They can't let. Oh. Jump shot by Wood. Put in by Worthy. Worthy had great position inside. That was a shot, line. Jim. That was a shot, not a pass. But Worthy recognized that it's going to come up short and got it. North Carolina jumps back to another two-point lead. Jackson's going to have to, as you said, take up the slack and take the shot. There it is. Yes, Reggie Jackson hits it from the perimeter. If he'll do that, they'll have to guard Jackson, and then they can hit King with that back. 44-44, tied for the third time here in the second half. Still 15 minutes about to go in the game. They cannot let Worthy handle that ball in deep. He's going to get a basket if they do. North Carolina very delivered here. They get one of the big men open on the inside, either Worthy or Perkins. Now they're giving Jimmy Black the same shot that they're giving Jackson down the other end. See if he looks for it. They had all three of those big guys, Perkins, Wood, and Worthy, set a little triangle a moment ago. Well, that's part of their zone concept. They get that triangle and overload it. Right, Perkins walk. walked to the inside. He walked. That time, Perkins took too many steps. A half step, perhaps too much at least. And now Maryland takes over, tied up 44 44. And that didn't bother Perkins one no. bit. He, he you notice change. how he can conserve his energy? He walked down the court that time. He knows when to walk and when to run. And he just fouled. Isn't Perkins. it funny when you make one, you make two? First one on Perkins, though. First team foul of the half against North Carolina. I heard somebody credit it to Willie Mays. He said, You should never. Never ru run when you can walk, and never walk when you can stand, never stand when you can sit down, and never sit down when you can lay down. And that's the way he, he played, and that's how Perkins played. There's Albert King with a quick release. On the inbounds play, King broke the open spot, and Maryland's back in the lead, 46-44. That's the hole in the zone, King breaking up from the backside. 13.50 to go. This game has not come up short in any manner. Maryland's picking up their defense now, too. You see, they're giving the shot to Black. He's got to take that jumper. They're going to be careful in that. They can hit Worthy in that. They'll look. There's the lob inside the word. They blocked it. Oh, he was fouled. Here's the release to Manning over his head. Yeah, he was fouled for this. Yeah, that probably worked out even up, but Worthy got fouled on the inside at that and he goes up so strong in there, you know, if you knock that ball away from him, he almost have to tear his arm off. 46-44, Maryland. Maryland waiting for the 1-2-2 zone. North Carolina here concentrating on his powerful front line. Perkins and Worthy. Inside, Perkins with a hook shot. Tapped no, down by no basket. Well, they counted. it. They're going to let Wood have it. Ten points for Al Wood. That ties the score at 46 all. I think you can see that one was right in the cylinder. Not allowed to get the ball if it's in the cylinder when you make contact. North Carolina in the zone now, but they'll jump to a double team to get the weak side pass to Graham, a dangerous lob. Albert King, spot inside, Buck Williams tapped up once, and now he's fouled a second time. That'll be Al Wood's third foul. Number three on Wood. I don't know how many times we've talked about Buck Williams being a great quick leaper. Now watch how many times he's going to bounce. One. Now watch him go right back up. Two. And he would have been there for three. You see that? He doesn't even have to gather himself. It's almost like a pogo stick. Four and with power. Buck Williams. There it is. Right in the cylinder. Put right back in by North Carolina. No question that basket should not have counted. Was not shooting, say the officials. So it's just Maryland's ball here for an inbounds pass. And not yet on the ball. It's fumbled out of bounds by Ernie Graham. Graham took his eye off the ball. Thought about the harassing defense of North Carolina's. And with a score tied at 46. Here will come the Tar Heels with 12 37 to go in the game. Maryland staying back in that zone. North Carolina is really not going to the outside shooting that much. Here's a good one, though. Al Wood. Short rebound tip right to Worthy for the duck shot. That was right off the hands of Buck Williams. And Worthy, maybe that was poetic justice for the foul he didn't get. Good day, Jim. Maryland is not forcing the ball inside now. Jackson's playing 25, 30 feet from the basket. You can't attack that zone. The point guard's not going to take up the slack. Behind. Ball is kicked down here by North Carolina defense. 
And Maryland will have the ball, but right now we'll get a timeout. 11 minutes and 50 seconds to go. This is for the ACC title. And it's North Carolina by a field goal. 48 to 46. here of the play that uh, might have been goal tipping. Let's see. We'll see it right here. Now look at Worthy, Wood, everybody coming. If the ball is anywhere near the cylinder, it cannot be touched by a player on either team. And obviously that ball is still in the cylinder. And it doesn't all have to be in the cylinder. Any, Any portion of that ball, that cylinder goes all the way to the ceiling. That one wasn't even a tough call. Two-point lead by North Carolina. Turnovers. Maryland has been giving up the ball more often. 14 times to nine. Charlie Pittman has returned for the Terrapins. No changes for North Carolina. Not much substituting going on in this game. But it's a much slower pace here in the second half. They got to take up the slack. They simply have to do it. Of course, they can go to the boards pretty good with Pittman right here. We'll see how far out Manning and Graham and uh, Manning and, and Reggie Jackson are. They're so far, they're not a shooting threat, and they're also not a passing threat from that far out. You take it right straight to Black from that, peak, that top point. They'll be giving Jackson a shot. See, he's got the shot. There goes Jackson. Rebound down by Perkins. North Carolina challenging Jackson to shoot. Worthy down four. And he fumbled the ball. Here comes Jackson out with it. Well, University of Maryland make a tie the score from behind. Knocked out of bounds by Wood. Anytime you can count the five, you should know somebody's behind you. Out of bounds play for Maryland. They need a pair here to tie it up. North Carolina leads 48-46. That almost was the first fast break that Maryland's had in this half. You remember how good they had the transition going in the first half? North Carolina shut it off. Now look at where what's happening. Pepper is just telling Jackson, come on, I'm going to back up to 10 feet. He's going to make you take that shot. He needs to go right straight at him and make him come out. They'll come out on Manning. He's got it. But they're not going to go out on Pitt. There's Jackson. He's got to take it right in there. Somebody's got to take it. That's going to be Jackson. And that, of course, will draw it out. He'd have made the other one if he had gone on taking it, but when he took too much time, he couldn't get it off. Tied for the fifth time in the second half at 48 all. 10 minutes and 25 seconds to go. A right, tense battle here between these two teams. Got it playing where the reserve of attack. Pepper fakes. Pepper caught in the air. Perkins, oh, he had a notion. Ah, uh, he could have made it. He can do anything. Uh, Worthy on the inside. Fires it up and in. Boy, what a game. Jim, James Worthy's had it. Jim, let's take a look quickly on the points scored by the backcourt. The front court is doing it all, aren't they? Yep. Only three field goals, four field goals. Jackson takes it all the way in, and the rebound is down by Worthy. Worthy on the break. North Carolina has the ball now with a two-point lead. It's the biggest lead the car he hasn't had at any time. Still back in the zone. They cannot let Worthy handle it in the middle, down deep. They cannot let him. They relaxed before. Pepper, way out. Hit. In this entire tournament, that young man has made a lot of big shots. He made five for seven yesterday. Just Shot. enough to keep the defense honest. Shot the winning goal yesterday against Lake Forest. Manning, big side to Albert King. Back to Manning, quick shot by Manning. That's it for two. And there's the guy Maryland needs to take up some of that slack. Let's see if Lefty's going after him, man to man, yep. 52-50, Maryland's coming out of the zone defense. Eight minutes, 55 seconds remaining. Boy, the style of this game has turned around for the first half. Black. Bob inside the first Pep Perkins. Because now he's got cut off that time by Buck Williams. Pittman did a great job defensively. There goes a tip up on the inside. Rebound now it is out of bounds to Maryland. Lost by Perkins. Perkins may be hurt. Perkins is down. No, he's okay. We think, we hope. Now he's all right. He's just going to take a little extra rest. Smart move. Watch him walk. Here he yeah. comes. Here he's going to walk down, take a little break. He is so court smart. You know, he's got the smarts. 
He's absolutely a great basketball player. Only his third year playing. He didn't start till he was a junior in high school. Dutch Morley now. Good uh, passer. Then a point guard for the University of Maryland. Back door, Ernie Graham. But Russell D. Burgos Graham firing inside. He didn't want to shoot it, but he had to. That was some kind of shot. Only Disco can make up that one. That's all right. 23 points for Graham. Ties the score again at 52 with eight minutes to go. Uh, this one has the tenth the makings of one of those classic battles. How about that Syracuse Villanova game today? You talk about a triple overtimer. Parkins has to go back outside with it. North Carolina always a threat. But the ball goes to the inside. Perkins. Here's Perkins. Fires it up and in. Sam Perkins. Good and James Worthy carrying the North Carolina attack. 54-52. That was North Carolina. We're going to get Morley the shot now. He's got to be ready to take it. See, he's got a wide open shot in the foul line. Albert King, the off balance. This ball comes out to Butko. North Carolina, two on one break. And Matt Doherty's going to hold it up. North Carolina's a very definite, deliberate attack. Doherty from the corner. Rebound, Albert King from Maryland. 54-52, North Carolina. Perkins really tired out there now. Dean Smith would like to either get him out or hopefully get a timeout. He doesn't want to take it. He's hoping lefty will take it when he picks up a TV timeout. Now there's a slam cut by Williams. Oh, a great a beat by King. By King. Beautiful. play, but I want to point out again, Perkins is too tired to be in position defensively. Now, Dean Smith has given a signal up there. He may be going to hold the ball for a minute or two. No, he's taking the time. Smart time play. Timeout for North Carolina. His big man was really pooped here with 6.43 to go. And right now, it's eight, uh, six minutes, 43 seconds to go. And it's tied at 54. Here we're gonna see that play inside. I see Perkins just so tired, he couldn't even get his hands up that time. Normally with his quick hands, he might have been able to pick off that pass. A tired player is about 50% as efficient as he'd normally be, and there's Williams, who never seems to get tired. Now, Williams like an iron man, 6'8 junior. And you can see Dean Smith did not want to take Perkins out of the game, so he had to use a timeout, and that one was strictly for the purposes of giving Sam Perkins a rest. And he wanted to get Worthy back in there, too. Each team's called timeout twice, each with three to go, with six minutes and 43 seconds left. Remember, early in the year, Sam Perkins was not a starter. That's when Pete Butko was starting. You know, from part of the system. There's a near steal by Ducks. Uh, Morley still putting pressure here to Jimmy Black. Uh, Black having to work with Worthy pressing him. All out man for man defense. And uh, there's a personal foul. That was a offensive foul by yep. North Carolina. Yep. That'll turn the ball over. Now, Dutch Morley, the massive product, jumping in front of a man to draw the charge. Now, watch, watch Morley. There was the cutter, and he jumped out in front of the cutter. He has the right to that position on the floor. That's number three. Three on James Worthy. That's bruising, too. Now, Maryland's got the ball with a tie score. Jimmy Black watching Dutch Morley very closely. Jump ball. Jimmy Black got the five-second call on Morley. That was right in front of us, and Morley got his hand chopped off. <laughs> he sure did get it hit. Jump will be at center court. He'll try it here, and uh, hey, he's, look at he's, he's saying, look, ref, there's the blood coming down my arm. That's right. He sure did show it to Tip, and it's kept alive by Maryland, but Perkins pulls it down for North Carolina. Another wide open. Got a wide open player in black, and Morley recovered by, by the time they got the ball to black. I don't think Sam Perkins realized which direction he was going immediately because his teammates were wide open. No four corners, or is it? Yep, probably to get a little rest. No, just that's all. It certainly they certainly aren't going to a four corner. No, I think it's just a little more of a delay. Five minutes and 40 seconds to go on the score tied. I have not spread it out. Jim, I think the reason for this is a couple of fold. One, to get a little rest. Two, to make sure that they don't get any more foul trouble on a guy like Worthy, who's got three. What does Al Wood have? Three. He has three. So I think what Dean Smith is doing is shortening the game right now. Figuring if he can keep his starters in the game, he's got a chance to win it much better than if they're out of there. So he's just going to shorten the time. Well, his percentage of scoring with either Worthy or Perkins handling the ball on the inside has been extremely high in this game. He has that weapon going for him. 
North Carolina has come from eight points down. They trail that much in the first half. The lead by as much as four. And right now, both teams dead even. 54 apiece with 455 remaining. There are an awful lot of ways for a coach who does not have a deep team to go ahead and uh, occupy that clock so he plays a shorter game. First guy I ever saw do that was Bones McKinney in my time, and he played against North Carolina one night and said, fellas, we're only going to play him a half a game, so hold the ball for the first half because they've got a better bench than we have, and it was a very smart move. We won the Dixie Classic that year. There's the feed to Perkins. Perkins is cut off. His pass is deflected. We get the safety back to the outside. Now four minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Maryland is going to have to make a decision here. Are they going to allow this to happen? Allow the clock to come down? Or are they going to really aggressively come out and play? They're going to be more aggressive, that's for sure. They the train in real trouble foul-wise. Only three uh, team fouls apiece, so they could get aggressive to get down late in the game. Well, they got Worthy out by, and they know Pittman can't guard him out that far out in the court. Less than four minutes to go. Score is tied. Remember that Maryland had the ball alone to go the same score, and they got a five-second call on a jump ball, and North Carolina came down with it. We have five, very close. Maryland applying pressure with three and a half minutes remaining. Well, if you hold it this long, you you, you might as well try to either get a layup. That's going to be a block on Pittman. But no foul, no foul shot here. That only gets it up to four. That's 14 fouls on Maryland. With 327 remaining. Remember last night how critical it was the fact that Wake Forest was not in the one and one at the end of the game. And a timeout. Only three minutes and 27 seconds to go. And these two great teams are tied at 54. Picking up and they pulled him and at 54 54 at Philly, we got some interesting results. Yeah, around the country, I'm sure all basketball fans are aware of all the upsets that took place. One of the big ones out in the Big Ten earlier this week was when Iowa got beat by Michigan State. Well, they dropped another one today as Ohio State beat them by eight. That'll open the door for Indiana to come back winning their last two. They beat Michigan State by 21, and Bobby Knight's team's going to be a real factor in the NCAA, no question about it. Indiana wins the Big Ten. Out there in the uh, WAC conference today, Brigham Young clobbered Utah, which put Wyoming right in the thick of things. And remember a guy by the name of Bradley, by the name of Dudley Bradley, played for North Carolina? Well, the star of the Wyoming team is his brother, one of the best players in the country, and Wyoming shares the title out there. And then how about Arizona State clobbered number one ranked Oregon State? 20 points. 20 points. James Madison beat Richmond, so they're in. Syracuse beat Villanova, they're in. Now on the inside of Jimmy Black. Three minutes and 25 seconds to go. North Carolina controlling the ball. Man to man now by Maryland. They're gonna have to pick up. North Carolina aggressively going for a score here. And it was pulled out by Worthy. Took his eye off yep. the ball. A turnover to Maryland with three minutes and 13 seconds to go. Now let's see if Maryland tries to freeze it themselves. Let's see who they have in the ball game. Albert King Graham. Manning out of the ball game. Still got time out to go, though, Billy. And a steal by Jimmy Black. Here's Black, and the playoff is good. Black on a big steal. Remember that play. North Carolina's going ahead, 56-54. Kind of remind me a little last year when there was a big steal on Albert King. Do you remember that one? Yep. Coming from behind. That was deflected out of bounds by Worthy. I'd get bounds play for Maryland coming up. I'd get Manning back in now, right now. Dutch Moore, they tried to foul Black, but he couldn't reach it, realizing it because of how about his ankle really shot. Is this uh, Jimmy Black's ankle re-injured? Re-injured. It's ankle he injured last night, and they put ice on it. He didn't even dress to go back to the hotel. But he may have won the ball game. We'll have to wait and see. That steal and conversion broke a tie, and now with two minutes and 37 seconds to go. Here comes Manning back in there now, Coach. He's got to have him in there to shoot that apple. Greg Manny will come in. They're going to take out Pittman. This will be a smaller lineup. Ernie Graham will go back to forward. So you got more in place of Jackson from the original lineup. Everybody else in from here. North Carolina in a zone. Now the Kings open. Cru crucial time. Crucial. No ball fake there, and they're going to have a hard time getting somebody open if they don't fake that ball a little bit. 
That's King. Batted down. He tried to throw it through the zone. If he had faked him, he'd have gotten it to him. Costly turnover. North Carolina has the ball with the lead. And two minutes and ten seconds remaining. Now you know they're going to spread it out. Show you the value of Jimmy Black here and all his ball handling. There goes Pepper. Sit down by Wood. Now Wood gives North Carolina a little off. A little insurance with a four-point lead, 58-54. Nobody breaking to the ball aggressively. They're all standing in the spot. Ernie Graham bounced out of bounds. Now that was going to be Maryland's touch. ball. Oh. Ah. One thirty-nine remaining. North Carolina has taken command for the moment. And we're going to see Morley working here, trying to go for the double team. Back door that time by Pepper. Albert King did a smart thing. See how he pulled his hand away? But once again, that great front line of the University of North Carolina there to get the rebound. North Carolina players are smelling victory over there, but there's still a lot of time. Right. Nobody in the one and one yet. North Carolina with only three team fouls, Maryland with four. Maryland's been standing though the last few times down the court. They haven't been coming to the ball against the zone. Absolutely essential that Maryland score in this possession or North Carolina may be. Uh, They'll milk it out a little bit in the one and one. And down back uh, comes Buck Williams, foul by Al Wood. Well, there'll be no shot. That's a good fourth foul. That helps Maryland a great deal. Not much time goes off the clock. They pick up another foul. Plus it's to the foul on Al Wood. His fourth. If that becomes Parker, 137 remaining. And Albert King walks. Could not get the ball to the floor. A little tentative. James Worthy came out of nowhere just as Wood was going up. Sensational defensive play by Worthy. Now watch where he is. He's right under the basket. Now watch him. Here he comes. He just timed it right, and yes, Albert King did go off the floor by about an inch and a half. North Carolina gets the ball leading by four. 58-54. A Tar Heel strategy has paid off. The big steal was by Jimmy Black. Good shot. Here's Black firing it into Pepper. And now Worthy coming across, and the is fouled by Graham. Ernie Graham's fourth personal foul. James Worthy can now possibly put it completely out of reach with a 125 to go. But nobody goes across the lane any better than James Worthy. Look at this hook. He got pushed, and that rotated his whole shoulder around. That's why he obviously didn't hit that ball near the rim. Billy, when he's a ten, eight or ten feet from that basket with that ball, he's as tough as I've ever seen. Worthy with uh, 19 points, although the second one was in those 21, so it'll be unofficial. Oh, Buck Williams stepped in the lane again, got away with it that time. Five-point lead by North Carolina, the biggest for the ball game. There goes Ernie Graham. Graham fires the baseline. Inside, Buck Williams foul by Pepper. Oh, Pepper commits his first foul. This will be a shooting foul for Williams. It will be up for the first time tonight. He's been held to six points. Now Buck wanted that one because he had a three-point play opportunity, and it was a very smart move by Pepper. And it's amazing how strong he is. You know, he's about six foot four. He's holding his ground. And he goes up here and prevents a strong man from getting that shot off. That was a smart foul. North Carolina, uh, Maryland's gone six minutes without scoring. Uh, that breaks a long jump. A six-minute period, approximately, Maryland did not score. And they went behind by five. Well, that was important. Maybe got a three-point play back. Williams hits both hands for three. Four court pressure, and the ball's in the hands of Jimmy Black. Intercepted by Ernest Graham. Graham fires to the Manning for a layup. Blocked to the outside. Great defensive play by Al Wood. Barely got the turnover, and North Carolina calls timeout to prevent the jump ball. Oh, what a block by Wood. That was a great block, and that could have been a big turnaround for Mel. He could have got it within one. They should have because Ernie should have taken that shot when he had it. Still a lot of time. 59 seconds, three-point lead by North Carolina, and Maryland just saw a very precious possession game of nothing. Well, we're going to get them in the one and one. 
Well, now neither team, as you pointed out, not, neither team not has wanted one. Five foul feet. There was a smart play. Pepper now, two smart metal plays that he made in that last 10 seconds or so. One foul and Buck Williams making sure he didn't get the three-pointer and then called the timeout so he didn't lose the possession. Watch it again. Double Here was angle. the steal by Graham. Here's the shot you were saying, Bones. He should have taken right there. He passed it. Now watch Al Wood. Perfect timing. Gets the ball all the way and smacks it away. Al Wood is developed into an all-round player. Always a great shooter. Has become a fine defensive player. Rebounder this year. A team leader. Averaging 17.6 points and almost six rebounds a ball game. Winner of this uh, game automatically qualifies for the NCAA. Any little doubt that both are going to be headed for the playoffs. Jim, one of the things that could be a factor here is the number one seed for this part of the country. The Virginia had been a shoe in for it prior to coming to the tournament. Of course, North Carolina coming through here, that could be a factor. And where you're going to be placed throughout the nation, both of these teams will be in the NCAAs. It's so a matter of where they'll be placed. North Carolina's won 24 ball games. The victory here will be number 25, give them 25 and 7 on the year. 59-56 Tar Heels lead with 59 seconds to go. All out pressure by Maryland. Big guys here are handling the ball. They've got to think about 10 seconds here. Over the line to Al Wood. North Carolina now will run off the clock here with 45 seconds remaining. They should try for the steal, not the automatic foul. There's a foul by Reggie Jackson. Fouling Mike Pepper. That just stops the clock because it is only the 16 foul, I think. That's, all. That's right, 16. Well, I go to the one and one here. North Carolina has only five team fouls, the same position they were in last night. Wow. You notice how often Perkins is in a key place. There he is taking the ball out of bounds. They know he's such a good passer. There's the back door. Back door to what? That's going to steal it. 61 56. There goes Banning firing across court to Ernie Graham for a layup, and now Maryland kills the clock. Well, Graham gets it back to three, but only 22 seconds remain in the game, and North Carolina on the verge of yet another ACC championship. Oh, that was some play by Manning. He got caught up in the air and had enough composure to get that ball off to Graham. Did a beautiful, made a beautiful play out of it. We're going to see a play right now. Back door to Wood. Turned Albert King completely around and went right up to the stuff. Well, when you're playing that position, Billy, that's about all Albert can do is go after to keep him from handling the ball. And a back door is easy to go, but you've got to know how to throw it and when to throw it. And he has to get some weak side defense and help, and there was nobody there because North Carolina had cleared out. Well, the defense should have been slumped back into the middle of the alley. There's the turf, and he hadn't given up. I don't think the kids have either, and Norris Lefty, they're hanging right in there. Here we're going to see Manning. Now, he went up in the air against Worthy. Really took some concentration to realize where an open man would be, and here comes Graham. Not a fine basketball game. They got to steal this inbound pass, or they got to make a quick foul, and Carolina miss it for them to have any chance whatsoever. 22 seconds is a long, long time. Sit on that bench if you don't believe it. Both coming out. Pittman's going to be back in the game for defensive purposes. Ernie Graham sitting out. I'm sure Lefty want to get him up to the sidelines in case they get the ball back offensively. Somebody's going to break to the other end. I don't know who it's going to be, I believe. James Worthy firing down for the Pepper. He just and needs Pepper's going to take it in for a layup, and he charges. Oh, it's going oh, around good here. Play. No shooter. It's, a, it's, not, it's no shooting. No, it's going to be a big turnaround here. That's only the fifth team foul. It's going to be the sixth, Jim. Sixth team foul, foul. yep. Six. One more to go to the bonus. 14 seconds to go. Maryland trailing by three. Oh, now oh, you look back God. to that Buck Williams play that was not a three-point play. Well, you know, another thing you got to remember. Now, that he had just Pepper had made two good mental plays. That was not a good mental play because there's 14 seconds to go. He could have dribbled it out. All he needed to do was use the clock. The Bennett, did you notice what he did? He did not try to make that basket. He saw Perkins there. He simply put it on the board for Perkins to slam dunk. Maryland Nobody has two. back for Maryland. Why? Ah, here's a timeout. Albert King, they move the ball up floor. With 12 seconds to go, they call timeout. Trailing by three, 61 to 58. 
There was there 14 seconds to go on the clock. And there were 14 seconds to go, and that should have been an instantaneous call time out there. And two seconds was clicked off. Uh, not right. Should not be more than one at the very most. Well, tonight's game is the last one in the regular season of this 24th year of Atlantic Coast Conference basketball telecast by the C.D. Chesley Company. We want to express our appreciation to those who've had a part in it. We want to say thanks to ACC Commissioner Bob James and his staff, and to the Director of Athletics, the coaching staff, the Sports Information Directors from the ACC member universities, and our special appreciation to the sponsors of our ACC telecast and their advertising agencies, to the stations on the ACC Basketball Network, and most of all to you, our viewers, our sincere thanks to all. You wonder why. Boy, you saw that play right there. Pittman never established position. He kept moving over and moving over. And Coach, you might have been right. Pepper may have been putting that thing up on the board to get the ricochet. Our, our Maryland strategy here will be to try and score quickly and call another timeout. They still have one remaining with 12 seconds to go. See Graham back in the game. Graham King, Manning, and Morley. So they've got four guard, uh, four offensive threat type people. Nobody coming back to the ball. There goes Manning, and it is Manning out of the corner giving to King. King takes it inside. Mr. Ernie Graham follows up inside, and Maryland calls timeout with four seconds to go. Well, the strategy worked, but it took too much time. It took too long. They should have gotten the first ball to the best. And that's the last timeout for Maryland. And North North Carolina, Carolina. the key here is get the ball in bounds and hold it because they don't have to get it advanced over half court. There can be no five second call in the backcourt area. But the clock will not start till it touches the hands of one of the players in bounds. Manning almost lost this one. Good hustle on his part. Gets it inside. Albert King. Perkins turns on him. And here's Al Ernie Graham right there to put it through. Worthy makes sure he didn't foul on the shot. Right, right. They did not want a three-point play. One-point lead by North Carolina with four seconds to go. Another look, another angle. Watch the clock. Now they'd have had seven seconds if he didn't make that basket. It took two seconds, three seconds for that ball to fall through. Well, North Carolina is four seconds from its 10th ACC championship. That is a great record. Let's look at the shooting stats on this particular game. 60 to 57. Can't be any tighter. 61-60, North Carolina. The big play of the game has to be Jimmy Black Steele and driving layup of the score time. Jim, every time uh, a lot of people have asked me, you know, what's the biggest moment you remember in ACC tournament history? The one I remember is the year South Carolina won when they had the jump ball with less time than this, and North Carolina had Deadman jumping against Joyce. It looked like North Carolina had the game wrapped up, and Joyce out jumped him and got the easy basket to Owens. You know how he out jumped him? He grabbed his belt. <laughs> he grabbed his pants. Well, right? he also grabbed his shoulder, but that's his There's Al Wood. That's that's it. It. Block. That'll do it. And fall over. North Carolina wins it. 61 60. And North Carolina's Jakes over Maryland continues here as the Tar Heels won the ACC championship, turning back Maryland's bid in a great ball game, 61 60. Oh, Jim, a sensational ball game. Maryland never gave up, has nothing to be ashamed of. And now they're just absolutely tearing each other apart out there. The fans have come, the television cameras have come. They're just having a ball right now, and it's just moments.